All right, Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, which begins with the 144,000. Once again, it's another video. All praises and glory is due to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh Shai. That's His true name. The true name of the only begotten Son is Yahweh Shai. The name of the Father is Yahweh. Bahashem or Karkwadash. Karkwadash means the Holy Spirit. Okay, so... Uh, this video um, will be another edition of going to the comment board and I'm going to call it the subtitle the new moon is not the full moon okay and what inspired me to do this video is a comment that was left on this video here that I did earlier Deacon Akar Sakari blames the leadership of Great Millstone for the Boston fallout reprobates, which Elder Pastor calls them 32 demons. There's four dudes that left GMS Boston, went and formed their own thing, and are now reprobates and apostates of the faith, okay? So now, in this video, in the comment section, this comment is from Allah Shabbat. Right, so I'm going to read all the comments. All right, with, beginning with the first one. The comment says, I want to know what the true reason the leadership not teaching that the full moon is the new moon when the solar eclipse at the passing of Yahweh Shai proves that. Luke 23 44 to 46. Then he quotes, quotes the scripture. So I put a reply, the true reason, because he said I want to know the true reason why the leadership at GMS are not teaching that the full moon is the new moon. So I put, my reply was the true reason because it's not the truth. The new moon is not the full moon. And beginning felt the pastor, we've been teaching that, okay? And it's simply the truth. The new moon is not the full moon. The new moon happens on the first day of the month and it's dark. Okay, it has no light. Now, by the 14th day of the month going into the 15th day, it's full of light. Hence the title, full moon. Full of what? Full of light. New moon means no light. Okay? But you got a lot of Israelites that just can't get that simple reasoning. The true reason, because it's not the truth. The new moon is not the full moon. The new moon happens on the first day of the month. The full moon happens on the 14th day at evening of the month. And by the way, the word month means moon. It tells you that in the Apocrypha. Okay? So there's a big difference between the new moon and the full moon. Now, any person with common sense could see that. But we're learning something among these Israelites out here. A lot of them don't have no common sense. Okay? A lot of them, the elevator don't go to the freaking top. Okay? And out to lunch most of the time. Anyway, so I asked a question to this guy because this guy said, that, um, let's read that again. I want to know what the true reason the leadership not teaching that the full moon is the new moon when the solar eclipse at the passing of Yahweh Shai proves that. How does the solar eclipse proves that? The, this is what I ask him. How does a solar eclipse event prove the new moon is a full moon? Now we know that, yes, the scriptures does tell us that the sun at high noon when Yahweh Shai was placed on that cross and for three hours there was complete darkness so indeed that had to be a solar eclipse I'll, I'll buy that you know there was three hours of darkness while Yahweh was on that cross okay he was placed on the cross about I think about the sixth hour till the ninth hour and it was it was around the ninth hour when he uh, when he let out that that cry you know all right so yeah there was a solar eclipse event but how does the solar eclipse event prove that the new moon is a full moon I I, I Maybe I'm slow. I don't know. I don't get it. So he, he came back with this. A solar eclipse means the full moon was at least... Let me read this again. A solar eclipse means the full moon... Where's the connection, though? Where's the connection with the, with the, with the sun, solar as in sun, and the, and the moon? I, I don't get it. A solar eclipse means the full moon was at least two weeks away. The solar eclipse means the full moon was at least two weeks away. Proof that the Passover takes place during the dark moon. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> you can tell this per person is out to lunch, man. Edom was just throwing us off. No, you uh, throwing you off. Edom was just throwing us off. It was just us, you. Uh, track with this dark moon being the new moon stuff. The new moon is dark. The new moon has no light. Matter of fact, let me type in stages of the moon, okay? Stages. And Apostar has taught this to the point of ad nauseum. But the only reason I'm dealing with this is because it's, it's in a comment, so why not? You know, it's just another video, you know, why not? Stages of moon phases, right? Stages of moon phases. Okay, let's... What are the seven phases of the moon called? Uh, let's see. Let me get a good one, a real good one. Here we go. Perfect, perfect. Now, these are the stages of the moon as, you, as you're looking here, right? Hold on a second. Phases of the moon. You see that, right? Okay, so let's... What the hell? <laughs> That's just Satan. That's just Satan, see? Okay, so here we go. Here's the phases of the moon, right? New moon. Look at the new moon. Look at that. No light whatsoever. And, you know, uh, the new moon actually has a very thin sliver of light. And you had new moon watches in Israel. It was their job to look for the new moon. Okay, that was a very important job too. And then um, then you have the waxing crescent. Okay, as you see here, the moon, the light is starting to come into the body of the moon, the waxing crescent. But look at the new moon, totally dark, damn near dark. Okay, and then you have the third quarter, as you see here. You have the third quarter. Then you have the waning you have the, uh, oh, am I reading this wrong? Oh, yes, I am. I'm reading it wrong. Okay, I'm reading it wrong. My, my, my mistake. You have the new moon. Okay, you have the, I should have followed Daryl. I'm trying to get this thing to behave, but it's, it's just, oh, boy. Uh, here we go. Yeah. You have the new moon. Let's follow the arrow here, which I didn't do. New moon, then you have the waxing crescent, okay? Then you have the first quarter, okay? Then you have the waxing gibbous. Then you have the full moon, okay? So you go from the... Now, between this stage here, the new moon, and the full moon, that's 14 days. 14 days going into the 15th day. When it becomes, look at the, look at the diff. How can the new moon be the full moon? Do you see the big difference? Do you see the new moon? Let me blow it up for you so you can see. There's the new moon. There's the full moon. Big difference. Full of what? Light. Light. And by the way, this is when the moon is, is in its perfection. When it reaches its perfection. When it's full of light. Then it goes back to being a new moon again. As you see, waning gibbous. Forgive me, I read it earlier wrong, you know third quarter and then waning crescent you see so these are the stages of the moon you go from the new moon to waxing crescent to th uh, first quarter to waxing gibbous to full moon and that usually takes about 14 days in other words two weeks now the word week i found that out that's from the etymology the word week w-e-e-k as in eighth day of the of eighth day Oh, man. As in seventh day of the week, I'm thinking of that song, eight days a week. As in fifth day of the week, third day of the week, the word week means change. Look it up. Look it up. The word week means change. What, what Change. Change. Not change. Change. The word week means change. Now, what changes from the new moon to the full moon? The stages of the moon, that's what changes during the weeks. Week means change. W-E-E-K means change, week, okay? So that's what changes during the phases of the moon. The moon changes from the new moon. There's a big change from the new moon to the full moon. And it happens during the, during the week, two weeks to be exact, 14 days. A week is seven days, okay? The word week means change, okay? Then from uh, full moon back to the new moon. Again, another two weeks. 
okay? Thus, you have 28 days going into 29 days, okay? And then you have your cycles of the moon, okay? I mean, it's very easy to understand, okay? But this guy, uh, he says, a solar eclipse means the full moon was at least two weeks away. <laughs> Again, uh, I don't... Yeah, solar eclipse means the full moon was at least two weeks away. How he arrived at that, I don't know. Again, maybe I'm slow. Proof that the Passover takes place during the dark moon. No, the Passover takes place on the 14th day of the month. That's what the Bible tells us. On the 14th day of the month is the Lord's Passover. That's in the book of Deuteronomy. Okay, so by the 14th day of the month, let's go back to our moon chart. By the 14th day of the month, we go from a new moon to a full moon. Now, on the night of the Passover, all right, the Yahushua's Passover, there was a full moon. I'm going to show you this. Esau or Edom was just throwing us off tra track with this, no, throwing you off, off track with this dark moon being new moon stuff. Again, dark moon. All right, there it is. The dark moon. The dark moon is the new moon. The new moon starts anew, and then it goes to the full moon, full with light. Okay? Uh, reading on, it says, plus this year, the Plus, plus this year, the new year starts with a lunar eclipse, March 25th, and there a solar eclipse, April 8th, before the Passover. And um, as a matter of fact, um, you know what, let's just keep reading, okay? Uh, so I found this site here, uh, my, again, my reply to that individual, this account and many says on the night of the Passover, it was a full moon. And that makes sense, because Yahweh was in the Garden of Gethsemane. Um, again, Allah Shabbat comes back with, have, have to read that then, but I think Edom is trying to throw us off track. No, throwing you off track. And he ain't going to read it, man. Okay, he, she, who, whatever, they're not going to read it. Okay, have to read that then. Yeah, okay. When you look at the full moon, you just want to praise the Lord. It moves, when you look at the full moon, you just want to praise the Lord. It moves something in your spirit. But this great light is not in the Bible or talk about in the Bible at all. It got to be the new moon, which is talked about over and over again. What are you talking about? What is this, what is this person talking about? All right, the, the, the scriptures speak about the brightness of the moon. Okay, this person is bugged out, man. I had a lot of bug outs in Israel. Uh, so the brother from Ta Ta uh, uh, Tanzania, he replied, he said, Allah Shabbat, Esau got you. Esau got you. The information he provided are wrong. I understand where you're coming from. Huh? Uh, Esau got you. The information he provided are wrong. I understand where you're coming from. Um, I don't know. I'm a little in the dark on that one. But um, here's the information. Let's click on it. And, and this, this I found this. This is from Heritage History. Uh, when, when the King came, stories from the four Gospels. This is uh, by uh, George Hodges. In the Garden of Gethsemane, it says, The full moon was shining as our Lord and the disciples came down the outer stairs from the upper room. Now, the scriptures speak about the upper room where they held the Passover, right? The streets were still except where sounds of merry voices came from the houses where happy people sat at the Passover table. The little company met no opposition. He's talking about uh, Yahweh and the remaining disciples. By that time, Judas Iscariot had betrayed them. The little company met no opposition on the way and passed without hindrance through the city gate. The road ran down the hill into a deep valley crossed the bridge of a little stream called Kidron and then climbed the ascent of the Mount of Olives over the brook and at the foot of the mountain was a little garden of olive trees called Gethsemane. And we know that the word Gethsemane means oil press. The Lord was the, our Lord, Yahweh Shai was the was the oil that was being pressed in the garden. He was pressed down in the spirit. He told his disciples, his much pain within his spirit. And then he wanted his disciples to watch with him, okay, because he knew he was about to be sacrificed the next day on that cross. So he, he, he dreaded that moment, all right? 
So Gethsemane, that's Norman Omen. Gethsemane, I, li I literally look it up. It means oil press. Yahweh was that oil that was being pressed. But let's keep reading. It says, on the way, they had continued the conversation of the upper room. Did they remember as they went down the words of the psalm about the valley of the shadow of death into that dark, which really is America. America is that valley of the shadow of death. Into that dark valley, they were now descending. The time has fully come. The master said, of which I have been telling you, the Pharisees and Sadducees will take me and mock me and scourge me and spit upon me and kill me. And you, my friends, my dear friends, whom I have chosen to be with me, he's talking about the disciples which became apostles, who have stayed beside me even when the others turned their backs, even you will desert me. And eventually, yes, they did run away, Peter. Okay, Peter ran away. But the scripture said Peter followed him from afar. Okay, scripture does say that. Um, it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock shall be scattered abroad. So that's why they ran away. Then Peter speaking first of all cried, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. To which our Lord replied, I tell you, Peter, that this very night before tomorrow dawns, even in this night before the cock crow twice, you or thou shalt deny me thrice, which Peter ended up doing. But Peter declared more earnestly than before, Lord, I am ready to go with thee both into prison and to death. Even if I should die with thee, I will not deny thee in any wise. Likewise, also they said, also said they all. So they came into the garden and he left the disciples by the gate saying, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. But he took Peter, James, and John with him into the deeper shade of the olives. You remember in the garden of Gethsemane. The, uh, the others sat upon the grass in the moonlight. In the moonlight. It was a full moon that night. And you know, a full moon has an effect on people. Of, of, of people tend to get very emotional during a full moon. You've heard the saying when, when, when people start acting crazy, uh, you'll hear some people say, it must be a full moon out tonight. Okay? So it makes sense, man. It was a full moon. It was a big, bright ball shining in the sky when Yahweh Shai was being persecuted, man, in that garden of Gethsemane. It makes sense. All right? So they came into the garden. And he left the disciples by the gate, saying, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. But he took Peter, James, and John with him into the deeper shade of the olives. The others sat upon the grass in the moonlight, some thinking, some sleeping, some listening to faint sounds as one in great distress crying to the Most High in prayer. But the words were lost in the babbling of the running brook or in the rustle of the wind or in the leaves of the trees. So they kind of, you know, giving you... Uh, little history there all right i mean so far th what i'm reading here sounds plausible peter and james and john peter J peter and james and john went with the master and he began to be both troubled and amazed yeah the more clearly he saw the certainty of his approaching death the more impossible did it appear he was not afraid even then he might have escaped easily no, I, I think Yahweh was afraid. He didn't. He didn't want to deal with that. That's why he was. He was afraid. He was afraid because he prayed to the Father in the Garden of Gethsemane to take that cup away from him. Okay, he didn't want to go through that. But eventually, he, he, he like the the saying, um, uh, the Stoic saying of, uh, it was a saying of, uh, what's his name? Um, he's renowned for Stoicism. Um, Marcus Aurelius. Marcus Aurelius had a, a, he had a saying, Amor Fati, Amor Fati. Amor Fati means uh, uh, accept your fate, love your fate. And Yahweh I demonstrated that, Amor Fati. He loved his fate. He accepted his fate, okay? That's what the word is. Lit, it's Latin. It literally means love your fate, okay? So the more clearly he saw the certainty of his approaching death, the more impossible did it appear. He was not afraid. Even then, he might have escaped easily. He had he had but to walk out of the garden gate, and on and along and on along the road over to the Mount of Olives, past Bethany, into the country, and no man would harm him. If he would but live in peace and quietness, no Pharisee, no Sadducee would touch him. All that they wished for 
was that he would be silent. Yeah, because he, he was exposing them wicked niggas. A lot of them were wicked, man. Not all of them. Not all the Pharisees and Sadducees were wicked. The scriptures speak about a sect of the Pharisees that believed in Yahweh Shai. But the majority of them were. They were wicked. Okay. All that they wish for was that he would be silent. He might still live. Well, it's all set up in prophecy for Yahweh Shai to do what he eventually did. Uh, if he would return to the bench of the carpenter, <laughs> but that was utterly impossible. He had come, the son of the Most High, in the name of the Most High, to teach the truth of the Most High. That was his whole life. He could not imagine himself living and not doing that. Hey, we have the same attitude. We have the same mentality. That's why it is written, we have the mind of Yahweh Shai. So this is kind of spot on, what, what, what they're saying here. But that he, but that he who thus came on a mission or came on such a mission with such a message should be rejected that who that he whose heart was full of love should be hated love for his people and it's not go all christian so called christian here plantation christianity uh that they to whom he came should kill him this amazed him with a sad and dreadful amazement and he said to the three my soul is exceeding sorrowful yes he did say that even unto death tarry ye here and watch with me. And he went forward a while, or a while, a little, and fell upon the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. Uh, must it be, must this calamity come? To die was little, but thus to die was terrible beyond all speech of thought that the Pharisees and Sadducees should kill him, the very clergy of the church, with the approval of the church people. This was what broke his heart. If the common sinners of the street had hated him, he could have borne it, but that the good should hate him, that men should come out of the church. Well, the elect didn't hate him, all right? There were men chosen to believe in him. But that the good should hate him, that men should come out of the church for the act of prayer and plan to kill him. This amazed him and crushed him in the ground. He fell upon his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Let not, let me not thus die by the hands of those whom I love. Well, he didn't love them, man. <laughs> See, they're kind of going all Christian on, on you. Nevertheless, not I, not as I will, but as thou wilt. Okay, so let me see if they make any more reference to the moon. That's really what we want to get. Okay. That's really what we want to get. All right, so there was a full moon the night of the Passover. Okay. There was a full moon, man, shining down on Yahweh Shai as he was praying. As Yahweh Shai was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, there was a full moon shining down upon him. And the full moon has a way of heightening, heightening your emotions. Okay, so basically, uh, I'm going to leave it there, but... I want to get back to that part. Bear with me for a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Huh. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Okay, so... I mean, it says it right here. The full moon was shining on, or shining as our Lord and the disciples came down the outer stairs. Yeah. Then they make reference to it again. Okay. Bear with me for a minute. I want to find it. Come on, man. looking for the second part where it mentions about the full moon. Uh, 
There we go. Finally found it. So they came into the garden, and he left the disciples by the gate, saying, Sit ye here. Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. But he took Peter, James, and John with him into the deeper shade of the olives. The others sat upon the grass in the moonlight. It was a full moon that night. So with that, see you in the next one.